Happy Halloween! Woo! Yay! We made it! Yesterday was a very special anniversary. However, yesterday was a Tuesday, so sorry. No, we gotta do our thing. And Thomas takes precedent, apparently. Um, Sadly. So today we're going to be talking about the 15th anniversary of a very popular musical. Um, this musical actually started as a book by Gregory Maguire. This book is called Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West. The book did pretty well. Yeah. Um, well enough to where Stephen Schwartz read it and said, Ooh, I want to make this to a musical. Meanwhile, at the same time, producer Mark Platt was at Universal going, I'm going to make this into a movie. Something's missing. And Stephen Schwartz said, Yo, Mark, what's up? I think we should make this to a musical. And Mark was like, oh my god, a musical? That sounds great. We should definitely do that. So that was back in like 98, 99. I don't know if that's how that conversation went down. Uh, that's, that is what, that is verbatim how that conversation went down. If Steven Schwartz or Mark Platt would like to call and set up a meeting to discuss how it actually went down. Uh, I don't want to see Steven Schwartz <laughs> angry again. I've seen that once in my life. I don't want to see that again. Uh, Anyways, Stephen Schwartz does not like tattoos. No, um, and Stephen Schwartz does not like when people keep trying to tell him about their tattoos even after he has said, don't get a tattoo. <laughs> that was not us, by the way. That was somebody in front of us before we met him. So, like, yeah. he was not mad at me. Um, but I, it's not a thing I want to experience again. So they start producing this musical. They start workshopping it. Um, and then they open the show in the summer of 2003 in San Francisco. It went really well. There were some problems with it. They realized there that their main character of Alphaba, who was the Wicked Witch of the West, um, was not really well developed, but Glinda was, had a, a bubbly personality and just was so developed. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what happens. They're more fun to write. So then they said, well, how, how do we make this character uh, character. So then they took it down before they brought it up to New York in October of 2003 and they reworked the character and retooled yep. the show a little bit and it worked really well. The musical opened on October 30th, 2003. Um, the musical starred Kristen Chenoweth, Adina Menzel, Norbert Leo Butts, a whole slew of people. Um, Joel Grey, you name them, somebody's been in this show in the past yeah. 15 years. Yeah. The show, the musical, went on to win three Tonys, one for set design, one for costume design, and then one for best leading actress in a musical for a But Demon's not Out. best musical overall. Yeah. That's a different story. Um, but they did win the Grammy and yes. Drama Desk. They won, they won basically everything else. Um, and at that point, even if awards is a separate category we're going to be getting into at some point. Yes. But if even if something doesn't win awards, if people are willing to pay to go see it and it is continuing to sell out, they're gonna keep going. Like yeah. that's it. The, the awards really don't matter. It's word of mouth at that point. Mm -hmm. And the uh, popularity based on the book, which is based on The Wizard of Oz. The musical went on to do so well that Gregory Maguire said, well, crap, I can crank out a few more of these things. Um, so he cranked out three more books to produce The Wicked Years. Um, they kind of none of which I have read. Um, I have only read the first one, and I read it yeah. a really, really long time ago. Same. Um, so I barely remember it. There were characters that were cut from this when they transitioned to the musical. I mean, yeah. they realized that the most important thing that they needed to develop was the relationship between the two witches, because that was where the core of everything really was. I first read this book when I was about, I'd say, twelve or thirteen. Um, uh, yeah, don't know. I should have been reading it. At that age. This book has very adult content. This was the most mature book that I, I had read up to that point. I still think it is. Like, let's be real. I read a lot of, like, <laughs> YA books. Um, it was not the first book of his that 95. I read. My mom had um, Confessions of an Ugly Step. Which is so good. Which is good. Did you, did you, have um, you seen the movie? No, I have not. I have it. We're going to watch it. Stalker Channing is the stepmother. Ooh, okay. And she's um, such a good job. So I so I had read Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister first, and then I read Wicked, and then I read a bunch of his other books. Um, kind of all just they were in the library, so I just kind of like yeah. crashed through all of them. And I I moved to Germany in two thousand and two, so I missed all of this Wicked as a musical yeah. thing, and came back, and everybody just like sort of. By the time I came back and was aware of musical theater, it was just like, it was so, like, it was passe, it was done, like, it's been there forever, <laughs> like, it's just wicked, like, how have you not seen wicked, was kind of the attitude, and I was it's like, kind of like Hamilton I now. mean, I read the book, 
Yeah. Uh, I don't really get it. So like, well, and then again, I did kind of the thing where it's like, oh, this thing is super popular. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it over there, wait for it to cool off a little bit. Yeah. So I didn't see it until we 2016, saw it on until we saw it on tour, and. 20 suddenly 17 and then i watched it and went oh my god that's why eric talks the way he does <laughs> the way they use words the way they embellish words that did not need an embellishment all this one that's all you talk like and it was one of those like light bulb moments of like oh that's why you are who you are this was important to you. This like well, and I can I can back up why this is. My, I mean, even if I find another musical that's my favorite, like or something transitions into my that that spot, like most things don't affect your speaking style. No, but like I, your speech pattern. I've always had this fascination with the Wizard of Oz, and we'll get yeah. we'll do a whole week on that at some point because yeah. Wizard of Oz is is the American fairy tale. I think mm -hmm. the next closest thing to that would be um, honestly Percy Jackson. Yeah. And then Wicked was my first musical that I saw. Um, Wicked was my first and... Ooh. First musical you saw live. Yes. Yeah. you said Grease was the first one you watched. Grease was the first video, movie, movie, musical yeah. I watched, yeah. Um, I got you. A follow. A uh, follow narrative. And I think this is the only adult book I've ever read because I was like, oh, there's a lot going on here. I'm not comfortable. Um, but, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry the way you phrased that. This is most adult book. I'm not comfortable. So we saw the musical, I was on tour, and we saw Stephanie J. Block, and that's when I fell in love with Stephanie J. Block, but it was also Sebastian, who she later married, and they had really good chemistry on stage. Um, I so should hope so. They were really great. Um, <laughs> and then I've seen the show... A lot. The answer Yeah, like seven, seven or eight times? I don't even you know. You lost count. Uh, so yes, Anyways. and then we saw it here, and, and then, then we got the behind-the-scenes tour because yes, we knew because people that people were people are great. And then we saw it in New York in March of this year because we you won, won lottery. lottery, and then I won lottery for Brooklyn Mormon the next day. It was yes. a fantastic trip. Um, it was interesting to see Wicked in New York that time because you had you had seen it once. I had seen it. it I tour. had seen the tour version. Um, there were there was a couple next to us that had the one guy had seen the show a couple of times and the other guy had seen the show like a bajillion times yeah and it was weird and then the, there was a had two little kids behind two moms us and two daughters behind us that had never seen the show oh these little girls are the best they're looking they through going so into it looking through the program going i don't know who this character name is are we gonna find out are we gonna find out and i was like yes you're gonna know who they you are got this. Gonna, you're good gonna, you're good um, so hearing the guys' reactions next to us being like overly excited and hearing them freaking out anytime anything happened like behind us. Like when a us. plot twist happened. Yeah. Like when they like connected the dots, they went <gasps> like. <laughs> also, this New York, like this was the second time seeing it in New York, yeah. and when I saw it on tour with with everyone and actors reaching out, that was like it just doesn't feel the same. There's not as there's not the oomph, there's yeah. not the energy, the cast isn't isn't clicking as well, which is what I was so impressed with in New York. And then when we came back and Katie and I saw it with the lottery, I was like, I can't, I can never go see the show on tour again because it's just so good in New yeah. York. Yeah orchestra has got it together i love orchestras that can get their act together Sorry, yeah i love it <laughs> there are things about wicked that i am not a fan of there are things she that i doesn't enjoy. like bubbles um that's not really <laughs> My biggest issue, and it's honestly with just about any adaptation oh, of Wizard of Oz, answer. is that they get Emerald City wrong. Yeah. Emerald City isn't actually Emerald. They kind of, they kind of got it with this one. They but... like, there was like a reference to the glasses, but then like that gets dropped and they move away from that. And I'm like, but, but that's important. The fact that it's so fake, none of it is green. Yeah. None of it is green. Um, so that just has always kind of irked me because I'm like, it's not... That wouldn't have been hard. Like, you would have shot it the same way, but you just make sure that all the characters are wearing glasses. Like, it just, I, it bothers me that they miss the point of Emerald City, is that it, it's not just the wizard that's fake. Like, the whole city is fake. I think there's two things going on there. I think one of them, from an audience perspective, we are seeing th through the glasses the mm -hmm. entire time, seeing through the lens of, like, what's happening in the city. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing is that this goes back to the lost in adaptation type of thing where 
it's been adapted so many times that like exam yeah. like the slippers in this are silver and a little bit red and a little bit it depends on how the lighting hits it yeah they're they're silver at the core but it depends on how the lighting well goes. that that doesn't bother me as much as long as they're the core silver you know they can have a flash of other color it's live theater it needs yeah. color like that's not a problem for me so with emerald city they all choose to wear the glasses uh -huh. so it's the idea that like they choose to see things the way they want to see them they choose to see her as a problem because that's what they've chosen yeah and that's what they've been told yeah. One of your things that you don't like is like a love triangle. Ugh. <laughs> just, Ugh, I just like it was a plot in this, but I, it wasn't the most important thing, which is why I yeah. can kind of forgive it. It's just the, the there's the song that's between Elphaba and whatever the hell the guy's name is. I can't keep any of these names straight. I know Elphaba and Glinda, and that's it. Um. <laughs> This is really fun to watch this. <laughs> um, Please don't be offended. The song that she has with him in the woods, mm -hmm. I just, like, that's my, like, okay, now it's time to go to the bathroom and or <laughs> melt through my seat. Like, I just, the song just hits a wrong, I don't know, it hits me wrong. I'm very uncomfortable. They don't, like, there's nothing visually, like, it's not like they do something that makes me uncomfortable, but it's like the like everyone knows what's happening in this scene right and like that just ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so uncomfortable do you have a favorite song from the show that's not the romantic love ballad um it's what is this feeling which when you flip it to being a guy and a girl sounds like it's gonna be a great love song and then it flips and that's gorgeous I love setting up someone's expectations and smashing them down. Yeah. I'm not sure no. what mine would be. I like all of them. So thanks for watching. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen with this Wicked movie. We really don't. Um, maybe something fun will happen. Maybe it'll be a train wreck. I've seen many animation students do different yes. storyboards for an animated version of Wicked, which I would love. Um, because they do such a pretty job, and that's a, that's a good way to get it yeah. established, but I don't know how people... Eh. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's Where on tour, been? and it's in New York, and it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, as Stephanie J. Block says, um, they're going to run forever. Yeah. Um, Alrighty, well, you need to like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel, including that little notifications button. Make sure you know that we upload. That way you know that we upload a video every day. Every day we upload a video. Follow us on Facebook for regular updates. Follow mm. us on Instagram for irregular updates. <laughs> and of course, support us on Patreon. Yes, um, exclusive content for people that support us and, on Patreon. Uh, and, you know, we'd really like to continue to put a lot more time into this channel. And with your support, we could do that. So what do we say here? We say money, please. Money, please.